Welcome to 2 Timothy 2.15, where the Bible declares to study to show thyself approved to God. A workman need not be shamed, but rightfully divided in the word of truth. This is 2 Timothy 2.15, with your host, Apostle James H. Wynn, the pastor and the founder of the House of Prayer, Praise, and Worship. Hear ye him. We believe in God for the finances in this ministry. Listen to me, even when you leave here, if you want to sow, please help us sow. We need to get on the radio. We need to get on the radio because God has given me a mandate for this particular city right here. And my subject today, not my title, my subject, my text is this word right here, as if it did chapter. My subject is God's slim fast diet. Glory. Somebody say God's God. slim fast, slim fast. diet. Right. Now understand, this is a prophetic word. If you would do what this word is saying, everything that this word says is going to come to pass. Yes. We always look at a prophecy out of the mouth of a, of a person, and truly that God has anointed people to be oracles of God. But God said through Peter's mouth, we have no more sure word of prophecy than that which is written already. Well, I prophesy to yourself, get into your Bible, honey. Amen. Get into your Bible. And the things that you want, you desire, will be there. And if it don't line up with this, it ain't for you. Amen. When it comes to a little boy that like you, get in your Bible. If he don't line up to this word, Amen. that ain't the one for you. The devil is sinner. Anything. Call house. If it don't line up to the word of God, God ain't sinning. Amen. Hello. Amen. I like this sister back here with this silver and red on. I tell you. I love your spirit. That's why I can't say that to you because you're highly anointed in favor of the Lord. You are highly anointed in favor of the Lord. The Lord hears your prayers. You're a prayer intercessor. And God uses you awesomely and answers your prayers. And I hear the Lord say, whatsoever you bind in heaven will be bound in this earth. And whatsoever you loose in heaven will be loose. There's people who are running them out and you bind them up in the spirit and the spirit was in them and they choke on their spirit. God said, I anointed you with authority. So speak those things that be not as though they are. You can cover people spiritually and pray for them and tell them that you talk to the devil and say, not so devil. You won't take these. You took them. And some olders did the devil got a hold of them, but you were covering some younger ones. And you said, but you won't get these. And you cover them and fan the devil off and fight them off. God is highly anointed you and favored you. And you're being very humble in this service, but honey, if I let you loose, you got something to say. Amen. And you got a whole lot to say. And it'd be right, too. I'm going to hear from you before this is over. Amen. Isaiah 58, chapter 1, verse says, Cry out, spare not. That is commandment. Because Israel was in idolatry. God had promised the church back in the 54th chapter, confident them in the 54th chapter and promised them in the 55th chapter that they was going to possess the land and possess all these things. But somewhere around the 56th or 57th chapter, they got backslidden. Y'all not hear me? Amen. Yes, they did. They started not trusting God. And let me tell you why, because their flesh, and I heard a preacher teach this about fasting. He said that fasting, Jesus said this time, only kind, only come or go out through prayer and fasting. And he said that means this type of faith. But there was another type of fasting he left out. I don't like this new teaching they talk about, all you need is faith. We know that. All you say people can have faith in God will move. Hello? Because faith moves God. Right. The disciples before Pentecost, before the Holy Ghost came, had faith to cast out demons and devils. Open blind eyes. Y'all not hear me? Huh? So, yeah, they had authority. So why in the Old Testament is he talking about fasting? If all you need is faith. Because there are some things that fasting do that we don't know about. Yeah. And we're fasting for the Lord. I'm fasting for a car. I'm fasting for a husband. I don't see that nowhere in the Word of God. Amen. All right. That's right. So, so, so God commanded uh, uh, Isaiah to cry out and spare not. Spare not what? Don't spare the people's feelings. Can't you tell them? I preach. I won't spare your feelings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm gonna be loving the Lord, but if the Lord ain't sparing your feelings, neither am I. There's a book called The Heart Sins of Jesus. You need to get it. Because he sure told Peter that he was Satan. He's Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. Yes, he sure didn't spare Judas' feelings when he told Judas who he was. He sure didn't spare uh, uh, the woman in the well feelings when he told her that you got five husbands, which means you're the whole honey. And the one you got now is not yours. We, that sounds clean to us, but back then that was hard, honey. That, let me contemporize it. You're a whore, you're a skeezer, mm -hmm. you're a slut. And you're a prostitute making money. You got five men that you done worked already. And you got one at home now. You're sleeping with and living with ain't married to. And he ain't yours. Hello. Mm -hmm. that's, if that was today, that's just how you would have said it. Amen. So people tell me, you know, Doc, you, you know, you're a little too hard. You're a liar. 
Amen. You have to apply the pressure that's needed. Hello. Amen. So he was telling us in this time, let it fly. Cry out, spare not. I don't care if it's from the pulpit to the door. But tell these priests, tell the prophets, tell the whoever, the shepherds, tell the mothers, the fathers, the children, cry out, spare not. Matter of fact, don't whisper it either. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and shoot me show. My people, they're what? Transgressions. They're breaking spiritual laws. Sister Cleo is breaking the spiritual law. She's breaking the same spiritual law that the Satanists are breaking. Sister Cleo is a witch. Yeah. She is a prophetess, but she is not a prophetess of God. Hello. I want to do a teaching on that. I want to have a noonday service. Or if I'll do it during the week, if we can't do a noonday service. But I'm going to come and teach them in the overhead projector. And I'm going to show you because we need visuals. How people are operating in the wrong spirit. I'm going to teach it to you. If the pastor says, if not, I'll, I'll bring it in during the night service. I don't care, but I need to teach it everywhere I go. And once I have to teach this because people don't understand how to operate in the spirit. Anybody can operate in the spirit. Right. I was in the martial arts and I was operating in the spirit. Soul traveling, doing all kinds of things in the spirit. But that's why Muslims, you can't talk to Muslims talking about the miracles of God. Because in Allah's name, they work miracles. Y'all ain't listening. Amen. Right. And you may not even talk to a Hindu. You better not even talk to an African, they actually raise the dead. That's right, that's right. Through voodoo gods and the Bahamas and everything. So you can forget that. Because spiritually you can work, but they transgressed, which means there were laws, and they had spiritual laws and natural laws, and it was breaking the law. That's what transgress means. He said, show my people their transgression. Show them. The church today ain't showing nobody nothing. You let the little faggot, homosexual, excuse me, Sit right up in the pulpit and won't show them you're a homosexual. Amen. You let the whore, you let the liar, the adulterer, the thief, not in my church, that's why I have one. Because yes. it ain't fair for me to say I'm a shepherd and I can see this a child molester, not in NBC. The child molester sitting there and he want to molest the little boy sitting there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm the great apostle with a prophetic gift who can see the house of the car, but I couldn't see that. Yeah. Come on, because I want to be, you know, religious and walk in the niceties of the gospel and not offend somebody. Yeah. So therefore, you go to the conferences, TV church conference or whatever, and they'll tell you it's the biggest home room show you ever been in. They go in there getting phone numbers and going up in the hotel rooms from the preacher to the door. Hello. Amen. That's why I don't fit with them, because I don't come with that garbage. Cry out, share not. Show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. Oh, they come to the services. Yeah. Y'all couldn't have church like they had it then. They had it every day. That's right. Every day. They were told a bell, boom, 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 where did the Catholic Church get it from? And they would come out, whatever they're doing, they would close businesses, and they would, we're going to the synagogue, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Very repetitions, you don't see the Jews? You go, you be traveling on a truck stop, right at the right time, they will pull over. And we can't even pray every day in our secret class. Religious ways. They, sleep, they seek me daily. Delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness, well, and for some not going to God. He said, You still come to church acting like you didn't do nothing. Yeah. You still come to church looking for a, a word of prophecy and want to be blessed. Like you ain't hard, you ain't lied, you ain't back. Y'all don't want to deal with that. I think y'all get it. Y'all laugh because y'all know it's true. They come to church. See, even my little young sister here laughing. You know why? Because I saw the little man church, not in church. You know, how the little friends talk about it. What they do, fools up in church. Thing like, Man, can't wait till I get out there acting like they're in church. Know what they did, hear what be going on. You know, watch yourself at home, they're listening. Talk about the preacher like a dog, cursing, biting. Don't treat the husband right. Don't treat the wife right. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, understand the context in which this is written. He said, you seek me daily and delight in all my ways. As it should have said, as if, but as if a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of God. Now I can't see Isaiah saying that's what I'm attitude, or what we would call arrogance. It said, "You Negroes act like y'all ain't done nothing wrong." Hello, Negresses too. <laughs> Since y'all want our equal rights, here's some of your equal rights. <laughs> Y'all don't want to get on that one. <laughs> As a forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. Ordinances is just rules and regulations. He said, 
said, and they take delight in approaching to God. They love coming to the altar. Love coming to the altar to pray and seek God. Oh, Lord, talk to me. Oh, Lord, see, give me a word. Wherefore, now, now understand the context in which it was written. This is what they're saying. This is their response. And, and what, what I said, he's, he's reenacting what they did and what they said, what they said. So you know what? See, see, true ministry is very dramatic. It's to be acted out, role played out. Come on. Look what it says. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? Now he's up there on the stage. He's, he's doing, he's acting this thing out like Hamlet to them. That's how he was preaching back then. He said, and thou seest not. They was asking God, don't you see us fasting? Let me tell you something. There's a difference between a fast and starving. Yeah, right. I tell people fast. Oh, I fast all the time. I always skip that. I said, that's not a fast. A fast is purposeful. Yeah. And the enemy will fight you. When you go on a fast, you'll know the difference. You can go all day and not eat nothing and not worry about it. But go on a fast. Yeah, yeah. You'll be thirsty, drama, jewelry in the mouth. Fish fries look better. Hamburger look better. That's the spirit of the tempter. <laughs> you think the devil left you alone. Come on. Everybody offer you stuff. They went off you. I'll buy you lunch today. <laughs> Amen. Come on. That day you got plenty of money to get your own lunch. The day you didn't have no money, and somebody you didn't eat all day is because you didn't have the money. You want to do it. acting like you. I told a couple people, oh, I can do that. I, I, I skip lunch. You know, I said, I ain't talking about skipping lunch and starving. I'm talking about fasting. <laughs> Wherefore, we fasted, say they. Can you see the attitude yet? Say they. Can't you see it's even written in a different style of writing? All these things are purposeful. And thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our souls? And thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact on your ladies. These people used to put on sackcloth and ashes, camel hair backwards that was rough. You hear me? Sackcloth clothes that was rough against their skin. Huh? And they used to just, you know, try to make their cheeks look sunken in. And some of them used to, this where pins came from in, in, in the Catholic Church. Some of them would whip themselves and do all these things and crawl. And, you know, I'm afflicting my soul. Lord, can't you see me afflicting my soul? Huh? Hurting yourself. That's all you're doing, hurting yourself. That's it. He says, behold, you fast for strife and debate. And to smite, now you know, because this is ridiculous, with the fist of witness. Don't you know that some people, I'm not lying, just like, in the Bible, didn't the men fast for Paul to die? Mm -hmm. This was the man of God doing what the Lord said, they fasted and he would die. That's why they were sitting there, they thought their little prayer and fast came to pass with a serpent bit them. They was like, ah, there it is, our fast work. And he just went, oh, I love who he was called. He was cool, he said, no it didn't. <laughs> That's why I have a church back, because I be deserving people fasting to outdo somebody or win an argument. But to get it more and so they can bind somebody up. I said, you're a witch. That's witchcraft. You don't fast to do somebody in. You don't fast to win nothing. I'm going to be the head of the choir. I'm going to fast. And God going to make me the head choir member. You're a liar. You don't fast for those sacrifices. Just smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day. To make your voice be heard on high. God was speaking to the prophet. He was revealing to him. Yeah. All y'all doing is y'all doing this stuff so you can be the and I and oh God, before this week out, I see it, Lord. I'm gonna bring in some videos. If we get this news to service going on, uh, maybe I have to do a night service. A lot of people don't show up in the noonday service. I'm gonna have to pray tonight. But we're gonna try to get it going in the noon. I got videotapes will show you overseas, they still doing this stuff. That that he rebuked. And y'all don't want to talk about that either. That's why America's in the condition it is, the only nation under God. And we've let all these other ungodly nations in. And instead of conforming them to the word of God, we let them do what they want, their own religion. And that's why America is plagued like this plague. I got this woman who want to put my dick on me and she keeps talking about Africa, Africa. I said, honey, Africa is not my motherland. God pulled us out of Africa. We don't want it like Africa. All that satanic worship and stuff. The strongest voodoo over there is Santeria, which the Bahamut, which, which the, the people of Barbados do, the voodoo, and also the Catholics do. That's what they're burning the candles and all these little, you know, St. Mary, St. this. It's witchcraft. It's the real voodoo witchcraft. Mess with a Catholic if you want to. If you ain't covered truly by the blood, they will have you drooling in the mouth and bubbling out of your ears. They are into serious witchcraft and burning candles. They do not play. Saint Benedict and all, you don't know the power that Saint Benedict carries in their eyes, which is a deity and a demon. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the idolatry that these people got in. That's right. And he said, look, is it such a fast that I have chosen? No. A day for a man to afflict his soul? No. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day of the Lord? Question mark. Attitude. What you want to call arrogance or no love. He's too hard. Rebuke. Correct. Then exalt with all long suffering. Six verse says, is this, here come the correction. See? Uproot, tear down. He uprooted, tore down. Then build. I'm helping some of the ministers in here. You're going to get out here and be a people please all the time and always building. You're going to be putting sugar on poo. Hello. And I preach the message like that one day. Sugar on poo. And that's all we've been doing. We've been sweetening up in a whole bunch of mess. And it stinks instead of sending a sweet smell of savor to the Lord. Looks good, but it's it's waste. Hello. <laughs> Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. How do you know if you're anointed? The bands of wickedness is loosed off of somebody. Mm -hmm. To undo the heavy burdens. To undo the heavy burdens that was put on them. That's spiritual and naturally. That's why we feed people, clothe people, to undo the heavy burdens that was put on them. That's why we minister to people to get into their own businesses and everything so they don't seem burdened down on their job and live in an ungodly environment and have to fight with it. Then they can be godly, have their own business, and live how they want, live holy, play the music they want, and read their Bible when they want, and they lunch break, around the work, about hearing cursing and somebody smoking and lying and cheating. Y'all to hear me. Amen. And spiritually to undo the witchcraft and the spiritual works that was put on them, to undo it. Huh? And to let the oppressed go free. And that ye, you, break every yoke. Yes. Every, excuse me, everything that's holding you back. You have to break it. Hello? It. Ye means you. You. This is what the fast is for. That you would break every yoke. I can't leave Johnny alone. Fast! Mm hmm he or she left me up so hard, but I can't get over it. Fast! Yes. I can't stand it. Go. It hurt me. It's hard for me to forgive them. Fast! Amen. That's what the fast for. The fast to mortify your flesh, to break the yoke off of you, to undo the heavy burden spiritually that was wrapped on you. Witches can't stand me, but they can't do nothing to me. Amen. Because I'm fast! I don't fast for a car. I fast. That's maintenance. It's spiritual maintenance. Amen. I went through dilemmas. You hear what I'm saying? And women, if look good, I got to talk about me again. But I don't whore. I don't whore. Not because I don't whore. <laughs> Some of the mommies look good, and they come in, and they giving it up, and numbers and keys and everything. Amen. But when I see the Bible, said, free you from us. Free fornication. When I see it, I fast. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. My wife just now understanding that. I'm not faithful to my wife because I want to be. Even if I want to be and I do want to be, sometimes you feel like you can't be, but I fast. Yeah. Fast. See, we don't want to deal with the deliverance. But I'm answering some questions tonight. So I put myself on the spot. Yeah. Death work in me, and I can work in you. That's right. Fast. Ain't nobody no spiritual champion and giant. You better fast. That's right. That's right. Right. You better mortify that flesh. You're right about that. Come on. You better. So when a man is dying, you can come with your pretty self butt ball naked all day you want. He'd be like, look, move her. Where's the food? <laughs> huh? When your body is dying from thirst, and you don't care about a job. Mm. You don't care about whether somebody like you or not. Yeah. And fast to put you to the threshold of death. And when you see death coming, you're going to get right with God. Mm. Look, hello. Amen. Yes. <laughs> That's just a quick lesson on fasting. Look. It is not to deal thy bread to the hungry, is it not? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out in the house, and when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. I'm going to run through this real quick because I'm going to get into the prophetic. I'm going to get into the prophetic part of this message that, that what fasting brings forth. Remember, this is God's slim fast diet. Okay? Amen. Then, somebody say then. Then. Uh -huh. So you want God to move in the first verse 
You want to move in the second verse and the third verse and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth verse, but eight is the number of new beginnings. And that's why God told me to wear blue tonight. And when I got here, the problem was wearing blue because God said, I want to start a new beginning. See, colors mean something. Numbers mean something. Yeah, I don't need y'all. You got no blue too. My sister got no blue. You got no blue too. But well, anyway, but y'all ain't count at this point. Me and him. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's just a joke. Y'all, you know y'all count. <laughs> But it's a sign between me and him. <laughs> Eight is the number of new beginnings. There was a process to get to a place of your new beginning. When you do the right fast, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. No man puts a candle under the, come on, under a bush mm -hmm. or a bed. He puts it on a hill that all might see. Mm -hmm. Ye are the light of the world. Your light's not coming forth because you didn't fast. Amen. Then shall thy light break forth as the Lord. And thine help. Oh, I deserve some sickness in here. Some physical sicknesses. Fast. Do you know that God put, made your body, got a mechanism in it that will put you on a fast? What's the first thing happen when you get sick? You lose your appetite. When people are dying, I work with the dying. They don't eat, they don't drink. They break the scientific law that I, when I had my church going and we were shutting in and fasting and praying, we, I built the people up to seven days straight, no food, no water. Once a year, we had to do Amen. seven days, no food, no water. We had to do three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, well, the nights before that. Are you hearing me? No food, no water from, six, uh, from midnight till six the next day. And at the end of every month, we came in and shut in, shut in the church and slept and lived there for three straight days. No food, no water. Seven days straight, once a year, no food, no water. You won't see your church grow. You won't see the anointing break loose, even in the children. Start fasting and shut in. We had eight-year-old girls that was laying hands. People was getting healed. Demons were being cast out. It was so anointed that new people would come in and wouldn't be in the church a week and they could see demons and see angels. I got something that's coming up on uh, Wednesday to tell you. They used to be in my church and they're coming back and she wants to come up all the way up here. Are you hearing me? Amen. You all don't understand the weapons that God gives us fast. Mm -hmm. Then you will write a break one in health, you'll get healed. We have people that have bladder problems. And my wife had cancer in her womb. I fasted on her back and laid hands on. She got healed. Mm -hmm. Now we got three children. One was with having none. Fast. God's slim fast diet. The fast is not to the baby. It's not. For the sake of time, I want y'all to study this this whole week. You look at what it's not for and what it is for. I told you it's a prophetic word. Okay. He said, then what? You'll heal your health. Right? So spring forth when? Mm -hmm. Some people don't, I've been, I've been going around praying and people have been praying for me. I ain't healed yet. Fast. Kill that flesh, kill that demonic force and spirit that's in the flesh, and it will leave the flesh. Demons don't like to stay somewhere where it's not life. If you fast, your flesh is mortified, and a demon don't want to be there. And that's all sickness is, is a spirit. Mm -hmm. That's all an addiction is, is a spirit. That's all lust is, is a spirit. Elder Branch been abstaining from sex for eight years. He messed up one time. He tried to get in some drawers twice, but I was on top of him. Amen. He know, he's sitting right there. He's like a son to me. I don't like Amen. But he can tell you, the only way he upstayed is he fast. Like crazy. He's skin as a bean pole. Because he fast a lot. But we don't know when he get married, he's going to be fat as a tick. He's going to be like, Phew. You know, see, y'all be catching the revelations right now. I'm going to say, hey, man, hallelujah. And thy righteousness. Now, if you want to be a right status with God and be able to do the right thing, Righteousness, the act of being right, the act of obeying the laws of God, the reason it's hard for you, the Bible says the commands of God are not grievous. The reason the commandments are grievous to you is because your flesh is too alive. So yeah, it's hard to do that. You know, how many of y'all have cried and told the Lord, I thought you said your yoke is easy, and your thing burning is light. I can't stand them. I mean, you're telling me to love them, but get them. Amen. Because fast. Amen. <laughs> fast. <laughs> Shall go before thee. You'll be famous. You'll be known for it. They'll look at you and say, now that's a man or a woman of God. Yeah. It'll go before you. Your righteousness will be going before you. You won't have to say a word. People will say it. Your enemies will say it. Yeah. He 
said, and the glory of the Lord shall be our reward. God will put a glow and a light on you. Glory means light. Mm -hmm. The light of the Lord shall be a reward. To me, that's the greatest reward. Amen. Amen. And it goes on to tell you some other things. But one thing I like is the 12 verse says, and they that shall be of thee shall build thee all waste places. Mm -hmm. You can grow there. Thou shalt rise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach. You'll be counseling and ministering. That's counseling now. You'll be repairing the things that was torn down. The community will get repaired. You know why the communities are not changing? We're not fasting. And back in the old days, it was changing because the church would go on a fast of a healthy community, and whores would get saved, prostitutes would get saved, pimps would get saved, alcoholics, y'all don't hear me, heroin addicts would get saved. We're not doing it no more. All we care about is me, myself, and mine. I want a house. I want a car. I want a husband. I want a... Are you hearing me? Amen. Yeah, God slipped as If I went for a time today, God said, give me a week, and I'll take off the weight. Mm -hmm. Give me a week, and I'll take off the weight. The sixth verse, he said, we do the right fast. I'll loose the bags of witness. I'll undo the heavy burdens. Give me a week. The heavy burden. I'll take off the weight. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Good word. The commercial says, give me a week and they'll take off the weight that's fat. But God said, give me a week of fasting and I'll take off the heavy burdens that way. Yeah. Give me a week. And I'll take off the weight. Yeah. This week, I want y'all fast for this revival. Yeah. From midnight to six the next day, fast. Fast and see if God gonna do just what he says. We gotta get this word out to the community. Yeah. Cause all you gotta do is put them on a fast. All the president gotta do is tell the nation fast. Hello. Yeah. And if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, come on, turn from their wicked ways, huh? then shall I hear from heaven and I shall heal the land. The land's not gonna get healed till we fast. You can march, you can protest, you can have all the churches and revivals you want, but you got to make the people fast. Amen. God said, give me a week. And I'll take off the weight. Clap hands, talk about thank you. Yeah. Yeah. For the second time, because I know y'all come a long way. Y'all got a long way to go. I'm praying that y'all come back, support the ministry, help us with this endeavor for this expense, uh, expense of the ministry, and, and keep coming. Bring somebody. Bring somebody who's not saved. Bring somebody who delivers. God has given me some awesome messages and words. And it's going all through the week. I dare not take his glory. It's God. You hear me? And everything that I say, I make sure it's a prophetic word. I make sure it's a rainbow word. Amen? So those of y'all who did not get personal ministry, understand this is still for you. That God said, give me a week and I'll take off the weight. Yes. Amen? Man of God with the tie on, God said, I see business all in your hands. Not just ministry and the calling of ministry, but I see an administrative gift of business. I see the analytical mind of business and counsel and, and, and uh, uh, CEO and executive order. You hear what I'm saying? And I don't know if you're doing it, but you need to do it. You need to start gathering some people. I see you having meetings and gathering some people. And, and there's some jealousy that you're dealing with because God gave you a lot of revelation and idea. And you're a forerunner. You're not a follower. You're a leader. And because you like to start up a lot of things, people can't, they can't deal with that. Because they can't figure out why you should be the one. And the answer is this. God gave me the vision. That's all it is to it. Y'all need to follow what I'm asking you to do because God gave me the vision. Amen. You may have more of a provision for it, but I have the vision. For my provision, you wouldn't need the provision. So y'all just take your provision and hook it up with my provision. And we'll have something. Amen? Amen. But God has anointed you and called you. And you're very seasoned in your spirit. You're very subtle in your spirit. You watch things. You see things. You critique things. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to go and critique this message. God's going to give you so much revelation. That's why you laugh. You are. You'll be like, mm -hmm, I got it. Okay, I'm going to go and eat this up. Huh? Amen? Amen. But understand, I know what I'm doing. There's a whole lot we could get from this, but there's called point preaching. 3.5 point, point, six point. So God only wanted me to bring out some points to this. And as you go and you digest his word, he's going to give you more revelation. Yeah. Amen. And the reason that y'all need to come back through the, through the week is this. God said, we prophesy in part, we know in part. I gave you some tonight. Some of the same people are going to get some more word. Some ain't. Some are going to get some. You hear what I'm saying? Because we prophesy we, in part, we know in part. Just because you got a word tonight don't mean God ain't got a word for you tomorrow and the next day. Amen. Hello. You better come get this revival because I mean what I say. I'm not here to milk the city. I'm not here to juice it. I'm here to help this man of God build him up and what he's doing because he's an awesome, anointed man of God. And God don't want the attention on me. He wants it on him. I'm telling you, he wants it on this church. You hear me? The mistake that a lot of evangelists have made, and I'm helping teach some people tonight, is you go to a city and you stay too long. I will not be back after this week. I told him that. I don't want to focus on me. I'm not preaching to nobody else's church. I'm, not, I'm here for this season and this time. If I come back, it'll be six months to a year later. 
Don't believe that. Keep coming back. Keep coming. And you're where you're welcome out. And God will keep sending you to the same place. So where Paul went to the same place all the time. He went one place to another another. And he came back around, you know. But these people with these gimmicks because the money's going good or the vibe's going good. Well, I'm going to stay. Well, you're a liar. God ain't sending. Is this the fast? I'm told no. We on God's slim fast diet. Give God a week and he will take off the way. Cut me so God. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard. <laughs>I am a Christian. I am a conservative. I'm a Christian, so I believe that every human being, no matter how small or fragile or old, is created in the image of God. I'm a conservative, so I will work to stop the government from forcing Christians to pay for anything that ends a life. And I long for the day when the government will respect the value of each life the way that God does. I'm a Christian, so I believe children are a blessing from God. And I believe as a parent, I have a solemn duty to pass along to my small human a Christian view of the world, about truth with a capital T, about discernment, about how to make good choices. I'm a conservative, so if a government-run school teaches an anti-Christian view about truth or decision-making or relationships, I will object. I'm a Christian, so sometimes my eyes might get a little misty at a wedding. I believe that marriage is the sacred, lifelong union of a man and a woman. I'm a conservative, so I oppose the government redefining something it did not create. Especially now that we all can see that the goal has always been to use the force of government to silence Christian beliefs about morality. I'm a Christian, and not just on Sunday morning. My faith influences everything I do, from what I talk about, to how I do business, to how I live. I'm a conservative, so I know the purpose of the First Amendment is to protect us from an arrogant, overbearing, imperious government. The founders fully understood the hearts of human beings. They knew politicians would forever be finding devious ways to restrain the free exercise of religion and the right to speak freely. And I will freely commit my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor to protect those freedoms. I'm a Christian, I'm a conservative, and I am an American. It's over now. There's no more purpose for my lungs because I'm not breathing. If I thought that I was still alive, then I think I was dreaming. I just left the earth. My soul escaped my body now. I'm dead. And I'm rising into the heavens to find out what lies ahead. This life is over. And my time is done on earth. There's no more stressing. I'm about to meet the one that gave me all my life and blessings. Now it's time to hear his voice. And it's time to feel his embrace. And it's that time to meet my God. And now it's time to see his face. I'm at the gate. And I don't want to wait. I want to see my savior. I'm going to feel his presence. Have his safety and baby. In his favor, wait, they open up the gates and sunlight dances through the entrance. If I was alive, I'd pass out from the beauty of his presence. I can sense him all around me, I can feel him every place. He's here, I feel it, but that's not enough. I want to see his face. They close the gate as I walk in. Now, any memories are useless, any earthly love is worthless because no other can produce this. So much color, so much light. Life and wind and sun and love and music, so much happiness. God loves us and this paradise can prove it. Oh, where's he at though? I just want to see his face. I'll be around it. And I'm walking on the streets of gold, but I ain't getting my crown yet. Wait, I feel something. I turn around and I catch eyes with his. And I've never seen him before, but I still know who it is. Right now, I'm face to face with Jesus, looking God right in the eye. Immediately I bowed, and if I was alive, I would have cried. Now God was always right beside me, but I see him. I can touch him. I'll exhort him. I'm going to praise and magnify him because I love him. And I tell him, you're my king. This happiness cannot be doubled. You're my rock, my life, my ever-present help in times of trouble. And I love you. God, I love you. For eternity, I show you. But he looks me in the eye, and then he whispers, do I know you? Oh! <laughs>
Do you know me? Yeah, you made me. I was in church every service. But he tells me church without applying what you learned is worthless. But I was a choir member. I prayed through with poems and acting. But he says he checked the book of life and that my name was absent. And I'm laughing like there must be a mistake. I just won't hear it. Then he says I praised him, but I didn't have him in my spirit. I can't bear it. Laurel thought I gave you praise wholeheartedly. But then he turns his head away. And then he says, depart from me. I start to scream, but it's too late. Immediately I feel the flame and I'm ashamed. It's me to blame. I could have stopped all of this pain. Life ended like this for me. This ain't how I wanted to conclude. Uh, that's why in real life it won't be. But don't let this be your future. You may go to church, but man, you gotta live it. Don't be two-faced. Don't be hypocrites, guys. Don't be dogs and ladies. Don't be loose days. We ain't got no time. So right now, drop the games and lift your hands and let them in before it ends. Let's praise them while we had the chance. We thank you for tuning in this week to 2 Timothy 2.15. If you would like a copy of today's message or information, please write to the Houses of Prayer, Praise, and Worship Incorporated at 535 Lewis Lane, Somerville, South Carolina, 29483. Or by visiting us at www.hoppaw.org. Please ask for the message by title or number. And if you would like prayer, please call us at 772-626-6351 or email us at thoppaw at aol.com. And until next time, may God richly bless you. To show that simple people to God to be a word they need to never be ashamed. I'm wrapping up, I didn't know I wanted to.